Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts. The news continues to come fast and furious, faster than I can release videos, actually. So although I don't like releasing two videos on the same day, that's what I'm going to do. In regards to the Falcon 9 launch, I received the following notification from the FAA. Quote, the FAA is aware that an anomaly occurred during the SpaceX Starlink Group 9-3 mission that launched from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California on July. July 11th. The incident involved the failure of the upper stage rocket while it was in space. No public injuries or public property damage have been reported. The FAA is requiring an investigation. The FAA will be involved in every step of the investigation process and must approve SpaceX's final report, including any corrective actions. An investigation is designed to further enhance public safety, determine the root cause of the event, and identify corrective actions to avoid it from happening Again, a return to flight is based on the FAA determining that any system, process, or procedure related to the mishap does not affect public safety. In addition, SpaceX may need to request and receive approval from the FAA to modify its license that incorporates any corrective actions and meet all other licensing requirements. So to be 100% clear, yes, the engine experienced an RUD. Elon Musk said as much. RUD means explosion, not taking that one back. However, it could be that the FAA will allow unmanned flights of Falcon 9 to proceed. In fact, they almost definitely will during this investigation, but any crewed missions will probably be affected. The one thing that may not be affected though, and I'm gonna be clear about this and make a correction because a viewer pointed this out, is a potential rescue mission to the ISS. That's something that could be done with an empty Crew Dragon and any sort of future anomaly wouldn't impact a mission like that, at least as far as human lives are concerned. Although I really doubt that NASA is going to green light any rescue mission that involves Falcon 9 until the investigation is completed. In an emergency situation, Crew Dragon could be dispatched by Falcon 9 during the investigation. So may not be quite as dire as what I was saying. So let's go ahead and get to the rest of my corrections, or rather one more correction, and that's what's happening with Boca Chica. As you may recall, a few months ago, I released a video saying that it looks like that the vast majority of SpaceX's operations were being transferred over to Cape Canaveral because of their 44 launch requests that's still in process, that they were going to be moving their launch facilities away from Boca Chica, or at least their active mission-based launch facilities. That obviously is not the case because now, SpaceX is requesting a significant increase in launch cadence at Boca Chica. Let me go ahead and read you the FAA comment. Quote, the FAA is committed to seriously assessing the environmental impacts of all FAA licensed commercial space operations. This summer, the FAA will hold several public meetings for input on SpaceX's proposal to increase the number of launches and landings of its Starship Super Heavy vehicle at the Boca Chica launch site in Texas. This assessment, done in coordination with other federal agencies and with feedback from the public, will analyze SpaceX's proposal for up to 20 five annual Starship Super Heavy orbital launches and up to 25 annual landings of the Starship vehicle and up to 25 annual landings of the Super Heavy booster rocket. The FAA will release additional details about the draft environmental assessment for public review and comment by the end of July. And there will be five public meetings held. One will be on Tuesday, August 13th at the City of South Pot Island Convention Center at 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Another meeting at the same time, but August 15th, again, this time at the Port Isabel Event and Cultural Center, again, Thursday, August 15th. And then finally, Tuesday, August 20th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Central Time will be a virtual event. And incidentally, for the first two meetings, they also are going to repeat these meetings from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Central Time at both South Padre Island and the Port Isabel Center. So yeah, 
a lot of meetings are being held in order to accommodate public comment. And let me tell you something, this is going to be a shit show. We are talking about a lot of bird watching fans, a lot of environmentalists, and an entire Native American tribe are probably going to be on site for these particular meetings, and they are going to be extremely angry. SpaceX has quite a fight on their hands because 25 annual launches, and who knows, they might want to increase that cadence even further, involves a minimum of 25 road closures and probably a hell of a lot more than that because every one of these launches will also require at least one static fire on the pad. So we're talking about lots of road closures and lots of access to Boca Chica Beach being completely cut off year after year, something that will almost certainly get people very agitated. In addition to that, increasing the number of launches is almost certainly going to have an impact on the local bird population. Recent articles have indicated that at least some kind of impact has happened. Nine bird nests was quoted. Regardless, in my opinion, nine bird nests is not that significant of an impact, but at the same time, it was probably bad form to e for Elon Musk to say something like he was going to have an omelet in recognition of all that. That, I think, was in pretty poor taste and is going to really stir up more opposition to what's going on here. Now, let me be 100% clear with my views on this whole thing. Yes, I am actually glad, even though I was wrong about all of this, even though I thought that Boca Chica was going to become largely a test facility and was not really going to be ramping up their launch cadence, especially when SpaceX went for a 44 launch per year cadence at Cape Canaveral with nothing happening at Boca Chica. But clearly, I was wrong about that. However, they aren't asking for the same level of cadence that Cape Canaveral is getting, and I think that is significant. Significant. This obviously means that Boca Chica is going to remain an important part of SpaceX's active mission launch schedule. That means, at least in my opinion, that this is going to involve a lot of refueling tankers launching from Boca Chica. Keep in mind, as many tankers as can be launched in as short of a time as possible is absolutely essential to getting a refueling carried out. The longer it takes to refuel Starship, the more propellant and oxidizer is going to bleed off into space, and therefore the more launches you're going to have to undertake in order to refuel Starship. So yeah, having two functional facilities with one of them at least launching some tankers will have a big impact on SpaceX being able to carry out this refueling for Artemis 3 and other Moon and Mars related missions in the future. So I'm glad that this is happening. But the negative side of all of this is it is really going to stir up lots of trouble. There's already lots of pending lawsuits going on against the FAA and SpaceX being driven by this local Native American tribe and also by numerous environmental organizations and also other local organizations looking to preserve this region of South Texas, which is definitely being affected by SpaceX's presence. And although I'm confident that SpaceX will eventually win this confrontation, it's likely to hold up the process for a long time and create lots of bad blood between SpaceX and a great number of the locals. Not a confrontation I really wanted to see, a confrontation that I think maybe could have been avoided depending, of course, on on how much Cape Canaveral will be able to pick up the slack, but still, having Boca Chica involved in this process will admittedly make a big impact on SpaceX being successful in the long run. So in spite of my reservations, in the end, this is the right thing to do. One last thing that I'm not gonna make a retraction on, see that debris going by? Something definitely happened to an engine during this descent of Super Heavy. I have submitted a request for comment from the FAA and the entire footage, including the part after Super Heavy seemed to set down. Once again, look at all those flames. Something that SpaceX cut out of their recap of this particular 
particular landing. And of course, this infamous supposedly leaked picture and my request, which was made on the 9th, has gone unanswered. And I also submitted a Freedom of Information Act request. And when I did that, the FAA acknowledged that they had received it. They have 20 days, from my understanding of how these things work, to reply. But the fact that I have not received any sort of clarification from the FAA as to what happened to Super Heavy during IFT4, I mean, it would be a simple thing indeed to simply tell me that everything went as planned, that there was no explosion or no unplanned explosion, something like that. But instead, I'm getting static and that is very uncharacteristic of the FAA. Usually they are very responsive and at the very least will tell me that they can't comment on the issue or something like that, but instead I've received silence. Very strange thing indeed, and once again it continues to make me suspicious, and I'm not going to let go of this story until I get an answer. So until next time, thanks very much for watching. Please like. Please subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space.